Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. I've been thinking about the earthquakes hitting Japan and the emergencies with the tsunamis and the Japanese nuclear crisis. I've been thinking about the suffering of the Japanese people and the concern of people around the world to what extent this whole thing is going to escalate. And I've refrained from doing any type of programming about the event. I've wanted to take five, six days and contemplate how I could be useful and to communicate about it. And I kept getting guidance to call in professional remote viewer Lynn Buchanan. In August 2010, he was our guest to introduce us to remote viewing or controlled remote viewing. He was part of a psychic spy unit for Army Intelligence. He is the current executive director of a company called Problem Solutions and Innovations, also called PSI. And he is the author of the book, The Seventh Sense, The Secrets of Remote Viewing as Told by a Psychic Spy for the U.S. Military. Now, why do I invite him back to discuss controlled remote viewing and his work and training in the context of the Japanese nuclear crisis is because remote viewing is a very direct, time-sensitive, and accurate way to go in and examine and to facilitate and bring forth the solutions to something that is taking a very long time to sort in Japan. Please welcome Lynn Buchanan as he shares with us the applications of remote viewing, gives us the context for what it is again, and how he would apply his services and training to facilitate the end of the crisis and to solve the mystery of how to get this thing so it doesn't go ballistic. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Lynn Buchanan to It's Rainmaking Time. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Uh, Let me start out. You mentioned the context. Yes. The uh, context of controlled remote viewing is that it was a scientific methodology developed at Stanford Research Institute, uh, sponsored by the military, for the purpose of developing tools that would allow a person to um, get right straight to their own intuitive ability, talk to their subconscious mind, which somehow knows things, and um, deliver that information to people who can use it. Uh, that's controlled remote viewing, and it was a science. Remote viewing, as a term, started when uh, controlled remote viewing became declassified, and all of a sudden everybody started calling themselves remote viewers, and we had crystal ball remote viewers and palm remote viewers and so forth. And so uh, the controlled remote viewing is the science that was developed. Um, remote viewing, the term remote viewing, applies to so many things that it really has no definition. But the uh, controlled remote viewing was used by the military for a quarter of a century to aid in intelligence collection. And uh, so anyway, that's the background of it. Uh, As far as what it can do, it is very definitely real-world based. Um to solve problems, you know, we didn't, um, excuse me, we didn't uh, do anything for the military or the government except um, provide information that would let them uh, make plans, intentions on real world things. Uh, There was no spiritualism involved. There was no um, healing as such. Uh, although that was something that they always wanted to look into, you know, for uh, hopefully healing troops that were damaged in battle and all. But the um, the applications of it are very firmly rooted in the real physical world, uh, simply because that's its history in the military. And so the question of what it could do for Japan Right now, you have um, you have nuclear plants that are in no telling what kind of condition. 
that are broken, cracked. The um, uh, radiation is a potential hazard, although I don't think it's uh, the hazard that uh, Chernobyl certainly was. But um, sooner or later, somebody has to suit up and go into those facilities. And when they do, they're putting themselves at risk. Also, if they don't know what they're going to find in there, then they could go in and while simply working the way they normally would, you know, to fix something, they may destroy something and make things worse. A uh, controlled remote viewer sitting and working with them before they go in would be able to say, hey, here's what to look for, here's what to be careful of, and uh, here's what you do, and here's what you don't do. And, you know, could talk things over with the people who are going in, possibly save their lives and the lives of anyone else that might be exposed if the thing does have a meltdown or so. Regarding Fukushima Daiichi, explain why you could sit with the people that are going in to try to fix the situation, prepare them before they go in. In other words, what enables you to do that? Explain that to the public. Okay. Uh, basically, what was developed was a way that the subconscious mind can deliver its information to the conscious mind and, uh, you know, it can be brought out to people who can use it. And so if you're sitting there with a uh, schematic uh, or a building plan of the uh, facility, you can go over that and just like a, almost like a dowser, even though it is somewhat different, almost like a dowser, you can go over that plan and find the hot spots, find the... Uh, uh, broken valves, find all of the uh, dangerous spots and all that. And uh, if a person is to go in, then they are going in with a plan and with a certain job to do before they come out. Uh, even suited up, they never let them stay over like 15 minutes. And so they go in with one job to do, they do it and come back out. Uh, you can uh, find out, you know, as you, uh, as you talk to the person, what they're going to do, you can project yourself forward in time and, um, you know, you can find out what they're to do. You are, uh, you can project yourself forward in time with them as they do it. And you can add information which will let them do a, uh, a better job because they will have sort of a preview of information as to what's going on with that particular job. I have a very technical question for you that is going to seem obvious, but why wouldn't the Japanese government use satellite to go in and do the same thing? And how would this be distinct from, let's say, using a satellite to do it? Well, uh, the same situation exists there that existed back when... Uh, the uh, controlled remote viewing unit was developed for the military. That is, the spy in the sky satellites can see the roofs, uh, but they can't see what's going on inside. Uh, one of our viewers, a man named Joe McMonigle, got the task to um, uh, find out what was going on inside of a building. And um, there was a huge building. He said that they were building a submarine. And um, I came back and said, well, that's crazy because the thing is miles from the water. And uh, he gave the, the plans for the submarine, plus he gave the date and the time that they would roll the thing out and move it to the water. And uh, they actually diverted a Spy in the Sky satellite to, that, to be over that position at that date and time, and that was the only photograph that we had for years and years of the Boomer submarine, which was the uh, uh, Russia's biggest, newest automated submarine. And so a viewer can tell what's going on inside of a building, can project themselves forward and backward in time, because with controlled remote viewing, 